This is Algebra 2, Unit 11, Lesson 5, the rest of the notes on more work with sine and cosine functions. Okay, so where we left off on the last dead puzzle is um, we found that the sine and cosine are the same for an angle and its reference angle. So we can use that to find sine and cosine values for any angles if they are known for the references. Okay, so we did cosine of 150 and sine of 150. We figured out the cosine of 150 is negative square root of 3 over 2. And the sine of 150 is 1 half. And that was based on using the reference angle of 30 degrees in the quadrant that it falls and where the sine and cosine falls. Now remember, the quick way of remembering sine and cosine where it's positive and negative, A stands for all positive. S is for sine is positive. Everything else is negative. Uh, T is tangent. That's uh, in the third quadrant. So it's both sine and cosine are negative. And C Cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. All right, so we left off on cosine of 210. Well, think about where 210 is. If we go around, um, 210 degrees would fall in the third quadrant with a reference angle of 30 degrees. Okay, so if we go all the way around and the reference angle from the x-axis is 30 degrees. So that means we are in the third quadrant. So in the third quadrant, reference angle 30 degrees is cosine positive or negative. Well, it would be negative. So that means that it's going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. And if you think about it, it makes sense because if you are in the third quadrant, both your x and y coordinate are going to be negative. So if your x and y coordinate are both negative, that means that cosine is the x value. The x value will be negative. So cosine of 30 will be negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay, how about the sine of 210? Same idea. It'd be the same angle, reference angle, 30 degrees, and sine is also negative in the third quadrant. So this one is actually going to be negative 1 half. All right, cosine of 330. Where does 330 fall? Well, if I do 330, a reference angle, it comes out in the fourth quadrant like this. That means the reference angle is going to be 30 degrees. Okay, now in the fourth quadrant, is a cosine positive or negative? Well, if we look right here, fourth quadrant, cosine is going to be positive. So using the 30 degree angle, this is going to be the square root of 3 over 2. And the last one, the sine of 330. Okay, again, reference angle of 30 degrees, so we can use that. Um, we know it's going to be square root of, or excuse me, excuse me, going to be 1 half, but is it positive 1 half or negative 1 half? Well, again, in the fourth quadrant, Cosine is positive, that means sine is going to be negative. So this is going to be negative one half. And again, if you're not sure, remember sine is the y coordinate. Is the y coordinate positive or negative in the fourth quadrant? The y coordinate would be negative. So it comes out to be negative one half. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so we should not forget that trig functions are valid for radians as well as for degrees. So practice valuing these functions for each of the following radian points if needed, convert to degrees. Well, that's what I'm going to do. All right, so pi over 2, I'm going to convert to degrees. Pi over 2, remember you multiply by 180 over pi. These cancel out, and that gives you 90 degrees. So the sine of 90 degrees. Okay, so that's a quadrantal angle. All right, 90 degrees would be right there. What is the coordinate point at 90 degrees? Well, that would be 0, 1. And the sine of 90, 90 is the y coordinate. So sine of 90 is going to equal 1. Okay, pi over 3. Pi over 3 multiplied by 180 over pi is going to be 60 degrees. So we're looking for the sine of 60 degrees. Okay, now if we look at the sine of 60 degrees on the unit circle, or if you know what the values are, uh, for the unit circle, sine of 60 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. So if you're not sure, you can look it up on the unit circle to work that out. Um, or if you can just memorize those first uh, couple of them, you'd be fine. All right, cosine of 3 pi over 2. All right, let me convert 3 pi over 2 into degrees. Multiply by 180 over pi. Multiply this out, it comes out to be 270 degrees. All right, so the cosine of 270 degrees, again, that's another quadrantal angle. 270 degrees is right here on the unit circle, so its coordinates would be 0, negative 1. 
and cosine is the x-coordinate. So the x-coordinate would be 0. So this is going to equal 0. Okay, and then cosine of 3 pi over 4. All right, I'm going to convert 3 pi over 4 into degrees, multiply by 180 over pi, and this comes out to be 135 degrees. Okay, so 135 degrees is in the second quadrant over here. Its reference angle is 45 degrees. So that means it's got to be the square root of 2 over 2. All right, but is it positive square root of 2 or negative square root of 2 over 2? Well, it would be in the second quadrant. Remember, A, S, T, C. Sine is positive, so that means cosine is going to be negative. So using my reference angle of 45 degrees, this would actually have to be negative square root of 2 over 2. So if you can memorize 30, 45, 60, the values in each of the, in the first quadrant, you can just figure out where the sign is, uh, excuse me, the sign of the, of the quadrant is for each one using ASTC if you just know those values. And it's really quick once you figure them out. Or you can just look at the unit circle diagram, of course.